Okay, guys, next we'll get into the AV node block. So remembering that the AV node represents the, um, sorry, the, <clears throat> the AV node is a site of major delay. Um, and the interval that we will look at in terms of the integrity of the AV node, it will be the PR interval. Remembering that if the PR intervals uh, represents the time it takes from signal to pass through the AV node. Um, so signal typically from the SA node through the internodal tracks through the AV node into the ventricles. So the PR interval is prolonged. There's probably some delay occurring potentially at the AV node. Um, so, or some sort of blockage. So normally again, the PR interval, right, is no more than 0.2 seconds, right? So if it's longer than that, again, 0.2 seconds, of course, is five small boxes, or one large or thick line box, right? So, um, and we'll get into different degrees, but anytime we see a PR interval that's prolonged, again, more than that 0.2 seconds, right? Think something's gone on with the AV node, okay? So a first degree AV node block um, is just that the PR interval is a little bit elongated. Everything else checks out. QRS complex is normal. PR, we, uh, P waves are normal. Um, we still only have a single P wave. It's just that the PR interval is a little prolonged because maybe there's some fibrosis or there's some you know scarring or something is ca causing signal to be a little bit delayed from getting, you know, moving from the SA node through the AV node down into the ventricles or some sort of delay um, in that process. A second degree AV node block, right? There are two types and we'll get into that in a bit. There is type one or Mobitz one, also known as Wenkebach as the name for the, the, the I think it's a German physician who, who coined it. It's where we see the PR interval typically is prolonged at the beginning. It's longer than 0.2, but it gradually gets longer and longer and longer. And eventually we see a QRS complex completely drop out. So there's so much delay, it gets worse and worse and worse. And eventually a signal is never discharged to the ventricles because the delay is uh, so much more significant. A type two second degree AV block is that uh, the, the QRS drops out, but there is no progressive increase in the duration of the PR interval, right? So PR interval usually is still above 0.2 seconds, so it's still delayed, um, but there, and there is a dropout of the QRS, but there is no, you know, progressive increase. It doesn't get longer and longer, it stays, long, right, longer than 0.2, but it never gets any longer than that. And then we, we see a QRS drop. And we'll show you what that looks like in a bit. Um, so first degree AV node block. Again, you know, I'm not getting too deep into the weeds here of rate, but uh, let's identify here. So we've got normal looking P wave. T waves look okay. We have a narrow normal looking QRS complex. But again, let's calculate our PR interval, and we got, it's kind of marcated here. So from here at this point to here, and remember what we said, our PR interval should be no longer than 0.2 seconds or five small boxes, or which is the same as one large box, or a thick line box. So we can already see this one started right on a thick line box. It's already longer than 0.2, right? Just looking at this here, that's already longer. So that's a quick, quick estimate. Like this is this something's abnormal here. Then we look, yeah, I mean, counting it up in total, let's say this is so 0.2 plus, this is probably 0.28 seconds, right? Because you've got one, two, three, four, five, plus two, we get seven small boxes before we get to the Q, the Q wave. So this, um, this is a prolonged PR interval. However, we don't see any dropouts. We don't see any skipped beats. We don't see 
Anything abnormal besides just the, the, the PR intervals prolonged. So this would be a first degree AV no block. Now this may be observed in individuals who are highly trained or have higher vagal tone. You might see it in younger patients. Typically this is um, asymptomatic. Very rarely is this symptomatic. Um, you know, if it's a new finding, still requires further investigation. Um, could also occur if someone's using drugs. That could, could also be a cause or other heart disorders potentially too. Generally, abnormality, generally a little bit more benign, especially if it's an athlete who's, we, we recognize well condition, they don't have any adverse symptoms um, or, or symptoms occurring during exercise. But as a first degree AV node block, again, everything else is normal. QRS is still narrow, normal looking, P wave looks normal, T wave looks normal. Everything comes back to the isoelectric line. There's no ST depression. The rate in here isn't super outrageous. R to R intervals are still fairly consistent, right? It's just the PR intervals a little bit longer because there's some blockage somewhere at the um, between the SA node and uh, through the AV node. Now, at when we start moving to second degree is when we start seeing dropouts. We start end up seeing a loss of a QRS complex somewhere, right? General rule of thumb, if you see at any interval, any, any ECG, and you see two P waves, right, before a QRS complex, you can think, or two or more, <laughs> you can think second degree AV node block. And then we'll get into what type in a bit. Now, like I said, a type one or winky Bach, we see a progressive increase in the PR interval. And let's just calculate this one. Again, it already starts a little bit elongated, right? It's probably 0.24, but then it gets a little bit longer. So let's just draw it out here. It's a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and then eventually it, you know, it's so delayed it never even gets through, and we lose a QRS complex, right? Because there's some blockage at the AV node or things moving through the AV node that eventually that the act potential created in the SA node, again, we still have a normal P wave, just doesn't get through to the ventricles. Right, so we end up losing a QRS complex and then things restart. And then in that pattern, you know, continues. Now, typically this occurs in a, in, a, in a routine fashion. So quite often, you know, you'll see again, this repeated fashion. So this example here, we've got, you know, one, two, three normal beats or, or three conducted beats, because these still are abnormal, three conducted beats before it drops out. And you might see that pattern pretty consistently too, that you know it's maybe three before a dropout or four before a dropout, and again, progressively increasing PR interval. Again, Winky Bach, we have a progressively increased PR interval that usually starts above 0.2, gets longer and longer and longer until it drops out. And patients, when we're you know, assessing them, they'll often report they feel like their heart skips a beat. And if we're palpating them on a physical exam or even auscultating, you'll hear that too. You'll hear a skip beat. So and it'll happen in a consistent pattern, usually every third beat. So in this example, we would still hear. So you have a, a beat and then it would drop out. So a pause. Because um, again, if there's no conduction, and depolarization of the ventricle, there's no contraction. So that's basically what we observe here. So they may report you know, some, some palpitations or a skip beat. Now, um, again, treatment is for this is, it's usually not needed unless they're symptomatic. Um, there may be some reversible causes for this too, depending on what's going on here. Um, if they've got really bad bradycardia or symptoms or um, you're really, you know, inefficient pumping performance, you know, they may be medicated. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, um, <clears throat> we'll get into more, more severe ones later on. So a second degree AV node block type two, this is, um, a little bit more concerning than the Wenke Bach. 
Um, both are concerning, but this is a little bit more concerning. This occurs when, again, there is no precipitating prolongation, right? So even still, these individuals often have, call this eh, borderline, um, often they, their QR in, or PR intervals will still be a little bit prolonged. This one's a little bit normal, actually. But as you'll see, any time you see two P waves, and again, these are P waves, so shorter duration, not super tall compared to T waves, which are a little bit longer. And again, we have an example of what the T wave looks like on this ECG. If we see two P waves before a single, narrow, normal-looking QRS complex, Go, your mind should go to second degree AV node block. And then we're gonna look and see, is there a prolongation, you know, in the PR interval? And this, we don't see one. It stays about the same length, you know, before this dropout. Um, so again, PR interval does not get progressively longer before it drops out. This typically follows a consistent pattern, just like Wenkebach or type, type one. Um, but again, no progression. So same thing, you'd, 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 you know, you'd, you'd get three conducted beats before one drops out and then you restart that cycle. The same exact symptoms you'd probably feel, um, you know, these patients would probably feel. They feel like you're skipping a beat and you're palpating, you'll, you'll, you'll feel a drop beat every, you know, every fourth beat here in this example. So that is second degree AV node block type two. And again, the big difference between this one while there is a dropped beat, there is no progressive increase, right, um, in the PR interval. There's still a dropout, but it happens um, without the PR interval getting progressively longer. Uh, this is always pathological. Uh, patients may be asymptomatic, but you know, often they'll get lightheadedness or syncope. They're not a high risk for developing a much more significant blockage um, or significant AV node block, uh, potentially uh, proceeding into a type, um, a type three, or sorry, a, a third degree AV node block, um, which is referred to as a complete heart block, right? So this is when um, the blockage is so significant, right, that there is no communication now between the atria and the ventricles. So again, an AV node block conceptually is there's some sort of structural change to the, the pathway from the signal, moving from the SA node to the AV node, and uh, through the AV node to the ventricles. In a complete heart block, that pathway is blocked. Nothing, is, nothing from the atria is getting to the ventricles. So they're kind of doing their own thing without talking to each other. SA node has now no control over the ventricles, which is a dangerous situation to be in. Um, it may quickly deteriorate into ventricular fibrillation, asystole, sudden cardiac death even is an urgent emission for cardiac death. Um, and potentially patients are already, you know, um, unconscious or passed out potentially. Um, so in this, you'll see P waves because the SA, the SA node still doing its thing and depolarizing the atria but you won't see narrow QRSs, you'll see wide QRSs, and they won't be in any coordination from each other because they're doing their own thing. The SA node's conducting, you know, but that signal stops pretty much at the atria. And the ventricles are doing their own thing because they're, and now they're spontaneously con uh, conducting. So this is what it looks like. So again, our, our P waves look consistent. They look normal because the SA node's still doing its thing, but now the ventricles, are wide and weird because this is starting in the ventricles. They're not controlled by the atria and they're completely out of sync. They're not coordinated at all, right? Um, and that's a very dangerous situation to be in. So if you look at it, the, you know, if we look at these, you know, R to R intervals basically, right? Or sorry, R to R intervals here, they look fairly consistent. P, P to P's look pretty consistent too. We map it out. And sometimes you'll have a, a, a QRS complex fall over a P wave, like we have here in this situation. But there's no coordination between the two. And that's, again, a complete heart block. Now, there is no communication whatsoever between 
the um, atria, and then the ventricles. And then the last thing we'll talk about is premature atrial contractions. Uh, PACs arise from ectopic pacemaking tissue within the atria. Uh, you'll see an abnormal P wave, usually followed by a normal Q or, Q or S complex. This P wave, though, typically has a different morphology compared to the normal sinus-looking P waves. P PACs are normal electrical physiological phenomena, usually not requiring treatment. You may often see this from anxiety or caffeine. Uh, may cause the feeling of like skipping a beat. And an example that we have here, if we look at our rhythm strip, so often in your 12 lead ECG is an example that we have, we have all 12 leads here. So the three limb are augmented and then our precordial chest leads. And then on the bottom, we'll have a rhythm strip like we see here, right? So it gives us a six second view. So here we've got normal P wave QRS complex, but then we've got this random weird looking P and, and random weird looking QRS. So this is an example here of, of what a, um, a PAC, um, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a patient. And quite often once that discharges, you have this prolonged period of repolarization because we end up having a double beat basically um, because of this premature um, atrial contraction. Um, sometimes again, it will propagate down and, and create um, a, a separate QRS complex. So that is a PAC. Um, again, often um, benign, um, but you can see it um, uh, clinically as well. So uh, next we'll get into ventricular beats and some ventricular rhythms.